riding this train through the Western Territories for days now. They haven't seen one teepee. Indians live in teepees, don't they? Some people, but I don't think they'd build their homes right up next to the railroad tracks, would you? I guess not. I know I wouldn't. I hope after this I never see another railroad track again. In the last two years, we've gone from one town to another on enough train rides to last me a lifetime. The best part about this trip is that once we're in Lucky Lady, Nevada, we'll be able to stay put. Well, no one said an actor's life was an easy one, Raj, dear. And living like a gypsy is part of it. Won't you miss it, honey? Acting, I mean. I'm sure I shall. But to be able to remain in one town forever is a prospect I relish. And you can't fix the clearances and inheritance. That's right, Bobby. I can't believe that a great great aunt that I never even met left me a saloon in her will. We'll help you, pal. I figure if I can memorize a part of Hamlet, and I can learn and attend a bar in no time. And I don't be a gracious host of Clarence. We'll all do our part. Well, we'll have to stick it out a year, won't we? Didn't you say the will stipulates? You can't sell this place for a year. Yep, that's what it says. The lawyer who contacted me, Will Reader, mailed it to me. He says I'm supposed to meet him the minute we get to Lucky Lady, so he can hand the saloon over to me officially. Gee, how can you tell what your great great aunt gave you? She has the worst hearing I've ever seen. Great, great aunt Ivan. Ivan Fortune was in her 80s when she passed away. I guess her hands got pretty shaky by then. According to Mr. Reader, I'm her last living relative. Too bad she didn't have any money to That would have been nice, but I'm just happy to have a means of a nice, steady, reliable income. Unlike the theater profession. We'd better make it a success in this loop, since we used up all we had in the troops of government to buy our train tickets. Next up, Lucky Lady Nevada! Well, gang, I guess we're about to find out. Life is life way out west.
the lawyer who's handling all the fortunes of state, about buying the slump so I can tear down the wall between us and expand the saloon. He said the old woman left it to an heir who was doing town today. He won't say who it was. Well, what are you going to do? I'll get the new owner to sell me the property or else. Better than that. Hey, Jessica, come out and drink with us. Sure, Smitty, my goal is a little guy. I can use a root beer. Hey, Philip, Philip Black, a root beer for Jessica, and two more for Bob and me. Coming up. What are you doing here, Bob? Things getting too wild and woolly for you over at the barber shop? Not hardly. Business is really slow right now. If you need extra work, come on over to my blacksmith shop and choose some horses for me. No thanks, Smitty. If you're that hot, the best words you could do in this hair. Ever since the beauty car closed, we ladies have been eating days for it. Come on, Jessica. No self respecting man will be seen combing, cutting, and styling a woman's hair. It's unmanly. It may not be manly, but if you and I have learned how to style the way to wear for our place, we would be in trouble. Suit yourself, Bob. You're missing up on a chance to get a lot of money. I'll be right back. Well, hello, strangers. I haven't seen you all the lovely lady before. Uh, it's our first visit. You'll be seeing a lot of us from now on. Won't you join us, Miss... O'Keefe. Carrie O'Keefe. What elegant manners. If you're here to say, I guess you're going to be looking for a job? Actually... You might want to check with Rhoda Steed over there. Rhoda owns your own spread. And that's a silk with her. Rosa Brown. Rhoda might be able to use a cup lunch for ranch hands. <coughs> I see. From what we overheard, I gather that the men sitting next to us are a barber and a blacksmith? That's right. Barber and Smitty Black. And the men over there? Let's see. That's R.I.P. the undertaker. Bill Holder's in the middle. He's the local banker. And that's what I find, our judge. I see. I want to get to know the regular customers because... Excuse me. Sorry to interrupt. But Jessica wanted me to go with some lyrics she can carry so you can mouth them correctly. You're going to spoil us. Melody Plunkett, this is... I didn't get your brand, fellas. You're wrong, Miss Plunkett. And Roger Gaines. Pleasure to meet you. I sure did enjoy your piano playing. Thank you. I came here only to work after the first room was forbidden to sell liquor, or else it wouldn't be proper. I'm also employed for the pump organ at the local church. In case you can't tell, Melody here is a well brought up young lady. Excuse us, Jessica. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? <coughs> you think I'm bright and sunny? Not you, Dons. I was thinking about Melody. She's pretty, but that carries more of my type. Cute and sassy. I mean to circulate, boys. Hey, Will. Oh, uh, are you a Will reader? I am. Clarence Rollins? Yep, that's me. Oh, this is my pal, Roger Haynes. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Please, join us. So, you accompany Mr. Rollins to Nevada? Roger is a fellow performer. The ladies are back at the station watching over our trunks. We've got trunks and trunks full, costumes, wigs, props. I see. You have the wheel I sent you? Yep, right here. Then I suggest we get down to the courthouse this afternoon and file the proper ownership papers. So you can take possession of the establishment immediately. Have you told the folks running it that I'm taking over? There is no one running the business. But I got the feeling that the gentleman at the bar is managing the saloon. That's Colt Rowan Jr. He dresses like a gentleman, but if he's crossed, he could be one ruthless son of a gun. You're correct. Colt owns the Lucky Lady Saloon. But great great aunt Ira wrote that she was leaving me the Lucky Lady Saloon. Salon. What? I know it's difficult to read Miss Fortune's handwriting, but what she wrote in the will was Lucky Lady Salon. She owned and operated a beauty salon many years before she passed. Oh, gosh. Oh, golly. All this time, we thought I must apologize. I should have referred specifically to the salon in the letter I enclosed in the will. I can't sell the place for a year? That's correct. Last time I spoke to your great aunt, she was very ill. She said she wanted to give you at least a 
here before you can discover what a treasure she was leaving you. A treasure. Oh, some stinking old beauty parlor! <laughs> I'm disappointed too, Roger. Great great aunt Ivan didn't have to leave me anything at all. I'm just grateful she remembered me. Well, I guess we'll have to find jobs. <laughs> if it's any consolation, this fortune has living quarters above the salon. It's a large area with two bedrooms. I, at least we'll have a roof over our heads. If you'd like to see your inheritance. Yes, I would. Roger, will you go to the station and gather the ladies? Glad to, Clarence. This way, Mr. Rollins. And you two managed to meet them right away. I was serving their drink. And Jessica sent me to get Carrie. Uh-huh. I have to admit, the one they have is dressed my fancy. And I'll admit his friend Clarence is especially nice. So the both of you have no romantic prospects? I guess so. You're always late, Melody. Well, I'll have to watch my manager on Roger. He and Clarence are most of our fine men crowd that you should find in the saloon. Oh, well, I assume that includes our community. Shall we leave this pair of giddy girls alone while we go brush up on our etiquette, Miss Silver? By all means, Miss Silver, lead the way. Hey, Russell. What's with them gals with their noses in the air? They look like they walk around a pig side. Beats me, Rodel. I washed up before I came to town. Just to go to the saloon? I didn't bother. I could tell. <laughs> hey, you, Barbara. Bring us another round. All right, Rodel. Keep your shirt on. Just once I'd like to catch Rhoda Mess to a horse straw so I can push her in it. So how are things at the future parlor, all right? Business is down. I don't know if she also sucks like we used to. I'm glad of it. Lucky ladies have a reputation as good as ever. Those who folks settle into the area. No more home skaters asking for loans. Yeah, Bill. That's right. I've got a vault full of money. She's waiting for some good use. Well, there's only one business secret on here, Clarence. A beauty salon. 
I can wash and dry a lady's hair. That's easy enough. I'm pretty good at trimming and buffing fingernails. She gives me and Heidi manicures all the time. And I don't wish to sound boastful, but I am quite accomplished at the use of color tints. But who's going to style the customer's hair? That's obvious. You and Roger are wonderful at styling hair. I have seen the elaborate designs come up with for the wigs you wear in Emma's place. We are good stylists. The woman in the saloon said that women are getting desperate for a beauty salon. Remember? I remember, Roger, but I also remember hearing a man in the saloon saying that no self-respecting barber would ever be seen working on a woman's hair. He says it's on man. So, do it as a woman? What? <laughs> Clarence, do you remember the night in Buffalo when now got laryngitis? You said the show must go on. Put on a wig, a dress, pitch your voice real high, and play Julia. You were quite lovely, completely unbelievable. And Roger, you went on for me in that melodrama one night in Philadelphia when I sprained my ankle. You know, my dears, in Shakespeare's day, all of the women's roles were played by boys. We never get away with it. For one thing, me and Roger don't know the latest hairstyle. So make some up. Tell the woman they're the current range hair. I'm sure it love them. I know what. Pretend to be British. You do look great for exactly. And women will pay a fortune to get their hair done by an expert from London, England. Hey, if you're going to do an accent, I am too. I'm pretty good at several, but... The woman told the barber there's a lot of money to be made styling women's hair. We do need money. Well, I suppose. But we'll have to let Mr. Reader in on our secret and swore on the secrets. Somebody's coming our way! It's Melody and Carrie. They work at this point. They won't come in if they see men in here. A beauty salon is no man's land. Get out of sight! We had to come in and inquire if the lucky lady's salon was going to reopen. We work next door at the saloon. I promise you open your salon again. All those girls will want to be your customer. I also play the pump organ at the local church. And I know for a fact that the ladies at the congregation will also frequent your establishment. How nice! Since Miss Fortune passed away, oh, might I require your relative? Are you there? Huh. No, miss. She, she left everything to, you see, um... Say 
ear. That tracks it will just have to open up on its own. Well, I hope your condition doesn't get any worse. I do too. I can't lead any further. If I did, I would have to lie down to rules wherever I wanted to go. <coughs> Player and staff, they're very nice, Sadie, and hard workers, too. I've hopped in a couple times to check on their progress, and Lady Claire and the other stylists were moving furniture and boxes of supplies, I'm sure I can budge. Those UP women come from sturdy stock. Guess so. How would I leave you here, throw on some errands, and then come back later to check out your new style? You old witch! All this time she never mentioned an heir living in England! All down, Colt! And tell me what Scotch Soap said. I am Bill Holder. For an extension of the loan, I got to buy the Lucky Lady Saloon. Cause since I can't sell liquor no more, I don't bring in enough money to make the monthly payments. He threatened to close us down! But did you tell Bill about your plan to buy the salon so you can enlarge the saloon? Yeah, yes, why would I want to expand a failing business? There ain't no way I could get another loan from the bank, even if this lady were all agreed to sell it to me. Well then, why are you throwing a party for her? I have an idea on how to get that property away from her. That's and legal, and it won't cost me a dime. Well then, what is it? Let me finish thinking it through. I'll tell you that. Yes, Lady Claire. 
love to invite you to a party tonight at the saloon to welcome you to town. Your staff is invited as well. It's a privilege to accept your history, Robert. Miss Blessing, you and Reverend Blessing are welcome as well. I accept my husband is out of town. And what about me? Who are you? What do you mean, who am I, Jessica? It's me, Rhoda. You're kidding. You started look real nice, Rhoda. From the back up. Hope to see you all there in Salem, ladies. How about another day now?
my secret until I'm rich enough to marry you. No, it's so sweet. It's so sweet, but <laughs> there. Ma'am, there isn't any sign of them. No sign of them. No, wait a minute. Did you say Lady Claire had some sort of garment problem? She probably went to the salon to fix it. It's worth a look. It's just my luck to be in love with a wonderful guy, not the only one who's talking about it. Except for Carrie. I have a feeling that Roger's letting her in on, in on our secret, too. He's crazy about her. Carrie feels the same way about him. But don't worry, she knows how to keep quiet. Oh. Garages, the Lady Claire must be there! The lights are on! It's Jessica Cole! They mustn't see me in here, or they might put two and two together. Stall them. Melody, what are you doing here? <coughs> Why aren't you at the saloon playing the piano? Because I was... She was helping me with my dress. I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> I thought that French gal was supposed to be helping her. Rogaine needed to change. Change his shoes. He said they once he had out to kill her. See, he? I bet she. Oh, <laughs> 
I, I don't worry. I did. If he's mad tonight, then catch him in the morning. He'll really be seeing red. That incident with Mr. Revolver made me exhausted. If this were a play, I'd be in intermission. Intermission? Yeah, Carrie. Partway through the play, actors need a break. The audience does too, so the curtain is closed for 10 to 15 minutes, and everybody relaxes.
when she busted a bottle of sticky stuff on my head last night. Oh, what was it? I don't know, but it did. Did it? <laughs> Yeah. 
I stipulated in my will that you could sell the lucky saloon salon for a year. So then you find what a treasure I bequeath you. Thanks. I hear you're an active boy. I hope that you have lived a long, happy life before it is your turn to bring down the final <coughs> the final curtain. Ah, yes. That's the phrase that they used to mean when an act passes on. Well, it's basically what she said in her will. It makes you wonder why she sent a letter as well. Maybe she wished to make one connection of your personal nature with your last living relative. The salon's a fine legacy. It's off to a great start. And since I'll be splitting the profits with my truth, I won't get rich, but I'll make enough to get money. That's good. Well, I guess I should be heading home now. Thanks for everything, Mr. Reader. Good night. Good night. Instructions. 
You keep an eye on the soil. I'll be back after I deposit our piano player here in the mop shop. Now I'm happy.
impress the vocabulary. Till tomorrow. We don't need me here, cult! I hope you're not afraid of the dark. Sweet dreams. Arrogant, contemptible, smarmy, duplicitous. Yeah, I don't play. 
player. A little music might help calm me down. Good idea. Will, I feel like dancing. You want to give the girl a whirl? Sure, Carrie. I'm a little cut-bustered, but I can try for it. Hey, Jets. Hello, girls. Hard work. It's good. What do you say we kick off our heels? You insist. Uh, you want to get off the field? You insist. Hey, come on. Why is it here, mister? Come dance with us. Hey. Uh, oh. Uh. Bring them to the 
the end of the tunnel. Come on.
she on student council and help putting on prom, but she will be at prom tomorrow. So I want to recognize Lexi. Lexi. <laughs> By the way, this is her brother, okay? If you're wondering why he's doing her. Okay, but Lexi is my um, junior this year, and Lexi, what you might not know is you see most of the set design, all the drawings and stuff, not all of it, but a good chunk majority was all hand-drawn, freely.